Welcome back to the show. Our next guest is a lawyer, writer, and former foreign policy advisor in Prime Minister Trudeau's administration. He grew up in the outskirts of Toronto, struggling to find his place as a first-generation Pakistani Muslim. In his new book titled Brown Boy, a Memoir, he weaves together a powerful personal narrative while interrogating the complexities of identity, family, religion, race, and class. Please welcome to the show, Omar Aziz. Hi! Hi. Welcome to the show. It's great to be here. Thank you. Uh, congratulations on the book. Now, you actually wrote uh, Brown Boy, this memoir, over a period of five years, and it begins with a child's perspective. Um, why was that important to you? Why did you make that choice? You know, I grew up in Scarborough. I grew up Muslim and working class. And as I reflected on the last 20 years and 20 years of war since 9-11, I thought childhood is difficult enough. But to grow up Muslim and brown, there was a lot of chaos and confusion. And I wanted to show the reader, all of us who are adults, what that perspective was like from a Muslim child's perspective, mm -hmm. right? Because you got war out there, you have violence out there, there's some racism in schools, and there was a lot of confusion and anxiety. And again, childhood is difficult enough, but showing it from a Muslim perspective really captured the essence of this identity and this life. And it's one that many kids go through as well. I'm glad you said that because although we are from different cultures, I really relate to your perspective as a first gen generation Canadian when you say that you felt divided between two worlds. Uh, what impact did that have on your family? Oh, a huge impact. I mean, my father was and is quite secular and he wanted us to assimilate. And my mother was all about religion and our roots and holding fast to our culture. Mm -hmm. So I kind of had this back and forth as I was growing up. And uh, it was sometimes difficult, but it gave me a great appreciation. <laughs> it gave me a great appreciation for the, for the different perspectives that we have. We come from different backgrounds and different worlds and different communities and we worship differently. That's what makes this society and this country so beautiful. And all I wanna do, honestly, is make some more room for the kids coming up next so they don't have to go through what I went through. Say it. Mm. Um, in the book, Omer, you write, um, quote, I had become a hyphenated man. No, I was the hyphen. What does that mean? Yeah, so I think that when you're a person of color or minority, the hyphen is what connects you to the community your parents left, but also this society, right? We say, oh, Chinese Canadian, Pakistani Canadian, and we've got all these hyphens, and yet we people of color are the hyphens. We're the bridges. We're the bridges between different worlds and different communities. And we get to exist in a new way, combining all of our heritages and identities to make something new, to define what the next generation of Canada looks like. So even though we carry these hyphens, I hope that they don't serve as a burden, but rather as a liberation, as something for us to build bridges with between identities and with the next generation. Mm -hmm. And you became the first, yeah. You, be you became the first in your family to go to university in the West. You studied in Paris, you went to Cambridge, you went to Yale Law, and you thought that you know these uh, prestigious degrees would help you attain power yeah. in, in society. But didn't really work out that way, right? Could you explain? Sure, I mean, it's funny because we grow up in a society where racism and sexism are part of the, the culture in the country. And then you get an education and you acquire new language and new tools and new, new vocabulary to interpret and analyze your world and your reality. And sometimes that's quite tough. Like there's really mental health challenges for people even who go to Yale and Harvard. Many of us, we have to conquer so much to get there. When we do get there, we still wonder, do we belong here or not? At the same time, I think it's really important for those of us who are not born with power, education and knowledge is a great tool and a great form of power. This world might not give you much, but a library card and a bookstore will be there for you to acquire knowledge and books, and all the great books always wait for us. So that gives us power to be able to deal with an unfair world. I love that. I love that. Yeah. All the great books will wait for us. Yeah. Wow. Um, so, uh, a lot changed in the world when Barack Obama became president and that campaign, uh, you know, running out in 2008. Right. And you say that it was your ideas of diversity and representation that changed after Obama's presidential campaign. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, that was a really important moment. I mean, I was 17 years old. I wasn't a good student. I was becoming a lost cause, right? Maybe. Many parents here, they, they have young kids. They worry about that as well. Like, high school is tough. Who knows what might happen? And I really didn't know what I was going to become. And then I saw Obama on the screen, and it was like, here's a brown-skinned person with a Muslim name mm -hmm. who looks like an uncle or cousin of mine who's a lawyer and running for president. 
that changed everything, mm -hmm. right? It's one thing for us to talk about diversity. It's totally different when we see someone, when kids see someone in front of them in the flesh, really, that changes our idea of what's possible and of what we can do. Maybe me being on this television show today, there'll be kids who will watch it and their definition of what's possible has been expanded. So that's really... And yet it hasn't been easy for you. You were a former foreign policy advisor in the administration of Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, and you have spoken and written about the racism that you faced mm -hmm. during that time. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Sure. The easiest thing for me to do is come here and say everything was okay and sure. it was all flowers, but that is not true. There was racism in the PMO and there was racism in the Liberal Party, and it hurt me a lot. I remember once I was out of Yale Law School working on big foreign policy issues like North Korea and Trump, and I went to this barbecue at the senior official's uh, house, and this official handed me a garbage bag and, oh. and asked basically that I go around and clean up everyone's trash. Oh. And for around an hour or two, I walked and I cleaned their trash with such fervor to almost show them that this was not acceptable, but I couldn't say anything, and I drove yeah. home from downtown to my parents' house, and honestly, I wanted to cry because I was mm. like, what did I do all this for that in one second, just like that, I'm your help? And I, that was the moment where I was like, this book, first of all, I'm gonna leave government because if this is how they treat us, I don't wanna be a part of it. And second of all, I'm gonna do everything I can in my power every day that I'm awake and alive to make sure that the next generation doesn't have to encounter this. This is not just about me, it's about expanding freedom for everybody else who's coming up too. And if I can do that, I would say I succeeded. Thank you so much for your energy, for your knowledge and wisdom. We wish you well. And thank you for being here today. The book is called Brown Boy. It's out today and good news for the audience. You are all going home with a copy. <laughs> Thanks for watching. We've got lots more discussion and debates on everything from food and fashion to pop culture and current events. Don't forget to click like and subscribe.